Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see how you can monitor the crashes and the performance of your Android application using Firebase monitoring system for crash ethics and performance monitoring. Let's get started. So here I'm having just a sample project. I won't be showing how you can integrate your app with Firebase because we already did that in a previous video. I think it was about Firebase anonymous login. The setup is always the same, okay? And let's start with digging to the documentation in order to add the setup for Crashlytics and Performance Monitoring. Now, both Firebase Crashlytics and Performance Monitoring are services provided by Firebase by Google. So Crashlytics will catch any issues, crash into your application and provide cache reporting. Same thing for Performance Monitoring, it's a service. And it will provide some performance issues like HTTP network time, for example, startup time, some graphic issues, and also you can use custom traces in order to measure specific block that will depend on your application and trust the time there. And it will give you these insights both for performance and crash ethics for both the Android device, the Android version, and different metadata. In order to start using those, we'll have to go to Android here. There is this set of dependencies you have to add. All right, I already added some of them. If you go to the project here, first of all, you'll have to add this type of thing. Well, because you need Firebase, you have to add Google Play services here. You need to add plugin for performance and plugin for crash ethics. You have to do the same here. You have to add these plugins here also. And now you have to add some dependencies. First of all, I added only the Firebase for performance. I will have to add the crash ethics also. Let's go to get started. And here, check Android and give me that. Okay, that's all, sync it, and you can start using those. Well, first of all, once you do that, the application and the service will automatically send reports to the Firebase backend. You don't have to add anything else. If you go to your activity and, for example, try to throw an exception by hand, illegal sync exception, right? Once you start it, throw it and check your dashboard for Firebase, you will see that this one will get raised with which device and so on. So this kind of trivial test, but our video of course doesn't end here. We'll try to see some things you can do. First of all, any crash that will stop the application will be reported automatically. Now, the way you get access to those services into your code is like the following. There is this kind of Firebase crash analytics, this object, you'll have to get an instance for that. And with that instance, you can do many things. You can log custom messages. You can, for example, delete and set report because if you don't have the internet connection, what this service will do, will store the reports internally until you have an internet connection to send it. There is check for this, like this custom logic if you want to send off everything. And there's this record exception. Usually we do this record exception within the try catch block. Sometimes you will catch the bug before crashing or stopping the application, but you need to report that to your dashboard. So you know this bug happens a lot and you need to fix this exception. There is this user ID. So basically, sometimes you will group the bugs based on the user. Well, you can do it based on the device model, based on the Android version. That's automatically set by Firebase Crashlytics service. But if you want to track the bugs that depended on the user, you can set user ID when you initialize this thing. And then when you send your bugs, it will go with this user ID. So you know this kind of work happened for that user exactly. So you are able to fix that. Well, the way you use this kind of statements inside your application. Let's say I want to log something. Usually I saw two main menus. First of all, a lot of people create like an extension function. They will do it like the following. Let's name it log. And they will do like log like that. And you can log and hear any message. You can do something like the following. And you can do basically Firebase Crush Analytics, get an instance for that, and just log that message. And whenever you are in your application, just type here log and it will go immediately. This one will use this function. You can just rename it properly. You can have also another one called log exception and just name it exception. And you have to record exception. Let's say you have tried catch here, but this tried catch doesn't have to be here in the main activity. It can be on the repository and the view model on your data sources and everything. You can catch using this log exception and you pass this exception by default. Now, the, the first thing, this one for setting the user ID, you have to do it only one time. Let's say when the application first time login, the user the first time login, you'll have to set this kind of keys. You can use it and then you, you shouldn't worry about it. Like this service will save this kind of information. But this, you have to repeat it every time. Now, this kind of implementation, I don't know. It's a little bit good. Well, you have to pollute a lot of 
your code with this login exception. But the main thing is that if you want to change this kind of logger, like log with what? With Crashlytics to something else, like there is multiple services that provide this kind of service, you can switch easily here. You can delete this and everything will go fine for your next release. Some other people use another implementation, like following, you create like an interface called logger. And this logger will have two main methods, or for example, just one method, like log exceptions. It will take an exception. Now you have to implement this interface using Firebase Crash Latics log. And that way you can use this Firebase Crash Latics, like the following, and you can log your exception. Or let me just put here the record exception. Okay, and now you can pass this object in your places where you want to do the logger. You can basically use dependency injection to inject this kind of object. And this kind provides the same thing, but this is more cleaner. But the main important thing about this kind of implementation is to enable testing. Now, this is a bit controversial about like, should we test logging exceptions and logging, for example, features and something else. Now, that would depend on the business, not the, the, the programmer, because the programmer also wants to know what is happening and logging exception. Now, there is two types, usually two types of logs. The one we need by programmers and the other one for the business. Like the business wants to know that there is crash in the app so they can fix it. Like this is a business requirement. If it is a business requirement, well, then you have to test it because it is a business requirement. The book is called Growing Object Oriented Pro Software by Test. This is by the London style of the test driven development. Okay, it's worth reading. Now, in this book, they're telling that there is diagnostic logs which are needed by the programmer. You don't have to test them because you will put them and then you will delete them. But there is some logs that will remain into the application. So this type of log need to be tested. The way to test it, like it's a little bit difficult, like how you would do that with Firebase Crashlytics. The main idea is that you would use mocks because this function and this class is pretty simple. It's just forwarding. You will have to mock the logger using some fake logger into the place where you mock. For example, in the activity, you will inject a fake logger and see if the activity is logging this kind of thing. Now with this, there is also another type of logger you can use. Like sometimes you want to use a logger when doing the development. Well, basically here, you can do also log dot, for example, E or using Timber. I don't know if I'm using Timber here. And that way you can log the exception for both like normal debugging modes and also for production thing. And when you release into production, you have to delete only this, or you can replace that with something specific to the development and change it into production. That's the controversial part about whether you should test this kind of logging, reporting, and so on. So that was for the crash analytics part. For the performance monitoring parts, it's just the same. You'll have to, of course, do this kind of Firebase performance trades. You should get an instance for that. It's always the same. And using that, you can access many things. The main important thing is this new trace. You can trace custom things. For example, you can, like for example, in here, I will do on create time, for example. I will create a trace for that. And I will wait until this complete. Let's say I will put it here. And once completed, when you have to start it and stop it, you have to stop it here and start it here. I'm sorry. And that way you will have this on create of the main activity there. Sometimes there is business requirements also for that. So you have to test that if the application is measuring exactly this kind of measures. So you have to put that in mind. But the main idea is that and any other metric, the app will collect it by default. Now keep in mind that this one, you can disable and enable this kind of tracing. So I think it is here. Yeah, exactly. Set performance collection enabled. Let's say in the beginning, you will say to the user, we want to collect performance thing you allow that or not. So basically you can enable it or not. That's the idea for performance monitoring and always try to abstract things a little bit because you don't know whether you'll be using a lot of this Firebase thing or whether you'll be replacing it in the future with another implementation or another service other than Firebase performance monitoring. Because this kind of statement, this one, and also the crash latex report will be a lot in your code. Like let's say if you have big the code base and let's say this statement is repeated like multiple times, it will be tedious when we want to change that. So always abstract that and provide a single source like that, like the following. And then when you want to replace it, when you want to test it, you have just to substitute this logger with another type of logger. Now here I'm in this project. This is a demo project provided by Firebase in order to see the crash latex and everything. So they have this application called Flooded. So here is the report part. Now you can see the report based on several things like the lights last 90 days, for example, and you see this crashes. There is this automatic tag. If you go here to this one, 
you will see on which devices this crash happened for Samsung, Huawei, and everything. You will see also a detailed thing, like on fully screen activities. You see also the time on which this error happened. You see many things, all right? You see some logs here, level start. This kind of logs are based from this analytics part. It's not from the crash analytics part. You can do that also from analytics. And there is this kind of keys, I don't know, some data. Yeah, exactly, the data about the device and everything. They are not using the user ID, I think, here. And basically here you can check the exception on which line, everything. As I said, this is the crash critic dashboard. There's another dashboard here, which is the performance dashboard. First of all, you can create metric as, as, as we said with custom tracing. And you can see here, like for example, this app start time, the app start time is a little bit faster. It is good, okay? So you can compare. So you can also select the version of your application here and you can compare the different measures. Here in the performance, you can see some network requests. Here is network request a little bit for this crash detection report, Google API, it's, it's taking two time. There is this custom tracing here, application in the background, the foreground, as you can see, duration. This is the custom tracing. And finally, there's the screen rendering, okay? This is also important. You will see how your application is the frozen frames and everything. You can go here, I think, and you can see exactly some detailed dashboard with detailed things. So this is a great way to monitor the performance in your application in order to make it good by the time. So that's it. So that's it, exactly performance and also crash analytics. So the main takeaway from this video, not only how to use it, like this one, this is a simple thing, anyone can do that, but how you would abstract it and make it clean in a way that you can use it, you can test it, and you can replace it in the future if you want. That's the main takeaway from that video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.